I believe that we're going through a tyranny as bad as Hitler, Hitler's Germany. I'm standing up for my child's future and all the kids' future and what I'm seeing um, being pushed on us has got nothing to do with health and that's why I'm here. Since 2017, the QAnon extremist ideology has connected and developed a wide web of conspiracy theories. The central claim of the movement is that former President Donald Trump is fighting a deep state secret cabal of Satan worshippers who traffic and abuse children. This is of course not true, but while this radicalized movement was formed and shaped in the crucible of American politics, it's also now found a foothold abroad, including in the United Kingdom. Hello. Hello. How are you? I'm not bad, thank you. How are you doing? Annie Kelly is a writer and researcher of far-right digital movements, including QAnon in the UK. I asked her what makes British QAnon different. The relationship between American QAnon and British QAnon is really interesting. At first, we had a really similar digital culture of QAnon. It kind of followed the similar pattern of um, Trump fighting the deep state, and it felt almost kind of like a copy. Over lockdown, it's really shifted. It's become much more rooted, I would say, in British culture. Um, I sometimes even say, you know, it's got a bit more of a British flavor now. British QAnon followers have been energized by the rejection of coronavirus precautions, lockdowns, and vaccines, as in the US, but with one crucial difference. I would say the most significant difference is how nonpartisan it seems to be. It really doesn't feel like it's connected to any kind of political party. It's not as if QAnon in the UK all thinks that, you know, Boris Johnson is secretly are working behind the scenes to stop the, the deep state or anything like that. In fact, he's, you know, really heavily villainized. I don't think there's any UK politician that they like don't view with mistrust. Over the course of the pandemic, Britain had intense and prolonged lockdowns which lasted many months and were meant to curb a devastating death rate. Anti-lockdown demonstrators have gathered each month in order to protest these restrictions. These demonstrations have brought together many different types of people. Not everyone at these rallies is there because they see themselves as a devoted follower of QAnon. But the marches do draw many people who carry QAnon-related signs and share QAnon memes online. These marches also draw many people, and particularly women, under the banner of Save the Children. Just protesting against the lockdown and the totalitarian country this is coming into now, and just for our children's futures, my grandchildren's futures. I am here for my children because they're coming for our children next. They start trialing it on the children, and children are dying. There's children in America that are doing the Pfizer trials, and they've died. I'm here today for that. The Save the Children conspiracy, which has nothing to do with the established British charity of the same name, is a large part of what drives British QAnon and rallies like the one seen in London. And it's partly inspired by stories of actual child abuse scandals in Britain. There have been just in, you know, recent memory, some really kind of horrific um, crimes that, you know, really stay on the public memory. And so it feels like Save the Children has especially blown up here because it's capitalizing on an obsession and anxiety um, that already exists. Content about QAnon and Save the Children conspiracies finds its way to regular people on Facebook and Instagram in groups about parenting, yoga, spirituality, and other lifestyle interests. These kinds of spaces were quick to pick up on QAnon content and help to radicalize women in particular. Basically our liberties and our freedoms are totally trampled on and there is actually no evidence to say that lockdowns work, masks work or the vaccination works. In fact the vaccination doesn't work because if it worked we wouldn't have to wear masks, we wouldn't have to socially distance, we still can't travel or we have to take tests. So what's the point of, of any of that? Okay. It doesn't make lies, sense. Lies, lies, lies. So I think it probably is through social media sites where you're constantly being fed this sort of kind of smorgasbord of content, this kind of drip feed of various bits of content. A picture of my friend and her baby, a picture of my friend and his dog, this kind of strange thing about, you know, sexual trafficking cabals and satanic rituals and stuff. Huh, that's weird. And quite often, I don't think they were necessarily looking for a conspiracy theory. I think it more happened by a kind of drip 
process through what start out as kind of really normal channels. The way that QAnon has adapted to exist in Britain as something apart from Trump and Trumpism may give some clues as to where the movement goes next in America. One of the ways I think that it's been so clever is the way that it doesn't attach itself like lots of conspiracy theories do to just one event in the past. It's not about like 9-11, the moon landing, JFK. But QAnon sort of offers you like a lens to everything that's happening as it happens. It kind of attaches itself to things like COVID conspiracy theories. It attaches itself to whatever the kind of political landscape is. Some version of it will exist probably until someone turns the internet off. But in terms of whether it will be recognizable to us as QAnon is probably a really interesting question. 